Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my nursing channel. And today's topic is going to be on that of pulses. How to assess for 11 different pulse sites, plus one. The heart rate is measured in a BPM or B per minute. My name is Nurse Master Charlie, and on my channel, I talk about all things nursing. So if you want to know more about nursing related topics, make sure that you subscribe, like this video, and then also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I make new videos. Today's video is part of a little series I've been doing about vital signs. And today's topic is going to be on that of pulses, how to assess for 11 different pulse sites plus one. We'll talk about that one later. So I'm also going to be talking about something called pulses paradoxes and also the Allen's test. So be sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss anything. So like I said, this video is going to be about how and where to assess 11 different pulse sites in the body. My last video was on how to take a blood pressure. So I'll put a link in the card here and then I'll also put it at the end of this video so you can watch that if you're interested. And then I did a quick little short video on what is a blood pressure cuff. So also be sure to check that one out. And like I mentioned in my other videos, I'm doing some NCLEX review questions. I'm asking the question in one video and giving you the answer in the second video. So here is the question I asked in the last video. So at a community health fair, a client has a blood pressure of 160 over 96 millimeters of mercury. The client states, my blood pressure is usually much lower. The nurse should tell the client to, A, get a recheck of blood pressure in the next 15 minutes, B, check the blood pressure again in two months, C, see the healthcare provider immediately, D, visit the healthcare provider within one week for a blood pressure check, and E, maybe take a second blood pressure medication. The answer is A, go get a blood pressure check within the next 15 minutes. Because the blood pressure reading is moderately high with the need to have it rechecked after a few minutes to verify it. The client states it's usually much lower than this and this is a concern that might be related to any type of a complication such as a stroke. Options B and D, waiting two months or a week for follow-up is quite too long. And C, an immediate check by the provider is not quite necessary. I mean, it's possibly if you want to have that done. But E, incorrect also is the nurse doesn't know if the patient takes blood pressure medication or did they forget to take it, or is it not effective? They don't actually know all the, the variables in this in answer C or answer E. So the correct answer is answer A. So stay tuned at the end of this video and I'll put another NCLEX related type question. So let's get right to the video. So what is a pulse? By definition, a pulse is the regular expansion or dilation of an artery caused by the ejection of blood into the arterial system by the contractions of the heart and your pulse is the rate at which your heart beats. Now to assess a pulse, you will need your fingertips to feel or palpate the pulse. You will need a watch to time the pulse. So you're gonna be counting the beats per minute in a pulse rate. And then you will need a, a stethoscope to measure the apical pulse of the heart or to listen to it. So when you assess a patient, you wanna assess whatever system you're assessing systematically. So for pulses, we're gonna assess from head to toe or head to foot. When we assess a pulse, we wanna assess bilaterally for symmetry. The only ones we will not assess bilaterally or at the same time will be our carotid pulses because we don't wanna stimulate vagal nerve stimulation and the apical pulse because there's only one site we're gonna to listen to. Okay, when we assess a pulse, we wanna assess for a couple of things. We wanna assess for the rhythm and the rate, well, pulses can be described as regular, irregular, regularly irregular, or irregularly irregular. And normally you wanna count for one minute. You can count for 30 seconds, but it's best to count for one minute, especially if you're barely learning about your patient. And once you are familiar with your patient and you know that they have a regular heartbeat, then it's easier to assess for 30 seconds. And for our apical pulses, we will listen for one minute. It's kind of like this. If you didn't know a patient and you're looking at half an EKG strip, that rhythm might be regular for those first 30 seconds, but for the whole minute, you might miss something. So like I said, once you know your patient, listening for 30 seconds is fine. If they are on cardiac medications, you might want to consider listening for a minute. Now you want to assess the strength of a pulse. Now pulses can be described as zero, indicating no palpable pulse, one plus indicating a faint pulse, 
two plus suggesting a slightly more diminished pulse than normal, three plus, it's a normal pulse, and four plus indicating a bounding pulse. So before you see your patient, make sure that you perform hand hygiene. And since you are going to be touching your patient in different areas, you want to let them know what you're going to be doing and then ask them if that's okay. And like I said, it's best to always go systematically. So we're gonna go from head to toe or head to foot. For our temporal artery, we can assess two sites. The area in front of the tragus, that's where the arrow is pointing, that is anterior and right in front of the tragus area. That is going to be our superficial temporal artery. That actually will ascend up to the anterior branch where my finger is pointing now. So we can assess two sites for the temporal artery. So next we have our carotid artery. Our carotid artery lies right between our sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is when you go like this, you can feel that. But this is the muscle here and our trachea. So we would take two or three fingers, put it right about here, and you can feel your carotid. And for our carotid artery, we do not want to palpate both of them at the same time. You can stimulate the vagus nerve, which can cause a lower blood pressure, and it can decrease oxygen and blood flow to the brain. For our axillary pulse, it's going to be found in the axilla area. So they are going to lift our arm up. It will be basically right here where the bicep kind of separates into where the bone area is. And that area is the axillary pulse. And that branches off from the subclavian artery into the axillary artery. And now we have our brachial artery. Our brachial artery branches off the axillary artery and the axillary artery continues on to become the brachial artery. And that is found right at the fold of the arm or the crease of the arm in what we call the antecubital fossa. And the brachial artery branches down into the radial artery on the thumb side and the ulnar artery on the pinky side. And these are the arteries that feed the hand. And what I'm gonna do now is show you a test called the Allen's test. For the Allen's test, we will need to locate the radial artery and the ulnar artery. This test is gonna be used to assess the arterial blood supply to the hand. The patient will then squeeze their hand tightly three times one, two, three, and hold. We will occlude both arteries. The patient will open their hand. We will release the ulnar artery, returning blood supply to the hand. We will repeat this for the radial artery. Squeeze the hand three times, hold tightly, occlude both arteries, and release the radial artery, returning blood supply to the hand. That is a normal finding. An abnormal finding would not return blood supply to the hand. So real quick, let's talk about something called pulsus paradoxus. Now you may be noticing at some point when you are assessing a patient's radial pulse, pulse for example, that when they take a breath as they're doing an inspiration, that the pulse seems to diminish. Maybe it even disappears at times. Now this can be a normal physiologic finding. However, it depends on how decrease the amount of strength the pulse is to be considered pulses paradoxes. To accurately measure how much the pulse pressure is decreasing, you would need to use an arterial monitor and or maybe use a blood pressure. The idea here is if somebody's systolic blood pressure is 120, for example, and they diminish to 110, and somebody who has a decrease of 10 millimeters of mercury or more is considered to have pulses paradoxes. And this is an indication of some type of cardiac tamponade usually, but that's a topic for a way later discussion. But I just wanted to bring it up in case you might notice as you're taking somebody's pulse rate that you notice that the pulse pressure or the intensity, the strength of it kind of decreases and then comes back to normal. That would be pulses paradoxes. To assess the apical pulse, we will need to find the clavicle, the sternal or jugular notch, and palpate down to about the angle of the sternum 
about the second intercostal space. We'll then count down to the fifth intercostal space. Of course, on the left side of the chest, we are palpating in between the ribs, the intercostal space, down to the fifth intercostal space. And we are looking for the apex of the heart. That's the point of maximal impulse. Now we will place our stethoscope on the mid clavicular line. That's midway through the clavicle down to the apex of the heart. Apply our stethoscope and listen for 60 seconds. To assess our femoral pulse, this is located in the inner thigh at the mid inguinal point, halfway between the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine. To assess our popliteal arteries, they are located behind the knees in the popliteal fossa. They derive from the femoral arteries. The best way to find them is to bend your knee with your foot not flat on the floor and then put your fingers up into the popliteal fossa. To assess our posterior tibialis pulse, we will need to find our medial malleolus, that's the ankle bone on the inside of the foot, and the Achilles tendon. The posterior tibialis is going to be approximately right in between those two landmarks. To be technical, it is two centimeters inferior and two centimeters posterior to the medial malleolus. To assess the dorsalis pedis pulse, you will need to find a landmark, the extensor of hallucis longus, also known as the EHL. This is a tendon that allows you to pull your toe up and it travels from the toe all the way on top of the foot to the base of the ankle. And like I said, it allows you to pull the toe up when you need to move your toe. Now, immediately laterally to the EHL, you will find your dorsalis pedis pulse. If we could see under the skin and see the arteries, we could see where the artery actually is and where we are palpating. Okay, so today I have shared with you how to find and assess the temporal pulses, the carotid pulse, the axillary pulse, the brachial pulse, the radial pulse, the ulnar pulse, the apical pulse, and the femoral pulse, or femoral pulses, the popliteal pulses, the dorsalis pedis, and the posterior tibialis pulse. Now there's another way to see a pulse, and that is going to be through an EKG monitoring. However, sometimes you can see a pulse and think the patient has a pulse rate, that is why we need to check as in something called PEA, or pulseless electrical activity, where a cardiac monitor will show the EKG tracing. However, that is the electrical conductivity of the heart. There may be not any actual physical contractility or any pumping of the heart. That's where we need to assess for a pulse in whatever area you're going to assess with. Because sometimes you may get into a code-like situation and they're giving cardiac meds, you're doing CPR, and you check for a pulse, and there is no pulse, although the monitor is showing that there is a heartbeat or an EKG tracing. That is why we assess for pulses. Now it's time for our NCLEX question. The question is, a nurse enters a patient's room to discover that the patient has no pulse or respirations. After calling for help, the first action the nurse should take is, a. Start a peripheral IV. B. Initiate high quality chest compressions. C. Establish an airway. And D. Obtain the crash cart. So for this question, there's only one answer. Some questions have multiple answers. So the answer I will give in the next video. So stay tuned and watch that video. So of the 11 pulse sites that I shared, in the comments, tell me which is the hardest pulse for you to find or for you to assess. So I shared about 11 different pulse assessment sites and also the EKG, which could be considered 12, but it's going to be a monitoring of the pulse, which could be PEA. So be careful with that. So this video is a part of a series 
that I'm doing on vital signs. The first video was all of the vital signs encompassed into one video, and I'm breaking them down individually into blood pressure. This one was on pulses. I will be doing temperature, respiration, pain, and oxygen saturation in the coming videos. So stay tuned for those. So I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and then click on the notification bell so you can be made aware when I release new videos. So and until the next video, God bless, thank you, and goodbye.